So, as continuing part two, and now getting less into talking about worldly things like websites and internet, I continue with the two things I left you with at the end of the first talk, which was called Telepathy and Symbolism, the Power of Incantation, or Will, Willpower. And this is part two of that talk. Uh, The two things I talked about, which I was going to continue to mention, were basically incantation was one of them, and that uh, I was talking about religious tomes, and that uh, the fact that the Bible, the Quran, and possibly the Vedas even. Uh, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which is actually uh, written with hieroglyphics, which are much more symbolic, more primitive, more similar to the runes and the Atu, the complexities we currently know as, know as characters, written characters. So one of the things was incantation, and that the original tome from which most religious canons and sacred books sprang from and the first canons and religious books which sprang from that first tome were all not books of ethics or morals rather books of incantations they were incantations magic spells invocations not ethical or moral books or law books or books of belief system they were incantations so um, in Buddhism when we meditate and when we pray we will use a thing called katha which in Pali or in Sanskrit means actually speech Katha is an incantation. The, the best way I would translate it is that it is a speech. All speech, as said in the Bible, in the beginning there was a word, are incantations. Now incantations are like exclamations. But what are the exclamations of? Well, so we have one of the two things. Incantation. Word. Speech that which is coming out of my mouth now and the meaning within it is there a meaning within it when all things are empty if you consider emptiness as described in the Buddhist conceptual system the, the, the Buddhist concept of emptiness if all things are empty then where is the meaning in my word is it in my mind is it traveling in the vehicle, which is the word? Or is it in your ear and your mind when you understand the meaning? Hmm? It's nowhere in between. This is something we will investigate more later. This is also where you can find emptiness. Emptiness you can find everywhere if you investigate. So, back to the point. Incantation. What does this incantation seem to do? Well, in the Bible, the word that was in the beginning, and the incantations that are in those early forms of writing, of what we now have developed into things we call religious canons, or Bibles, or Korans, or Vedas, works, written works which seem to have conditioned us into uh, belief systems which we call religions. This is all of course imaginary. It is, they are imaginary constructions of aggregated abstract things, dhammas, phenomena. We use form, we use abstract concept, we use chanting, we use lots of things. 
lots of imaginary things in order to attain a goal, a goal which is not imaginary, a state which is not imaginary, a state of unification, like the United States, which isn't so unified, but anyway, uh, to become one with oneself and the universe and the world, to destroy one's false view of a separate self and a separate universe around oneself, one's separate self, and to see the dependent origination within everything, the emptiness within everything which leads to non-clinging, these are all parts of the goal. There are so many parts of the goal. The goal is but one simple thing. We're so bad at it that we have to complicate it and find so many parts of the goal before we can puzzle our way back and piece the jigsaw together and make one picture out of it. And here we are in samsara. So, <coughs> trying to figure out incantation and where its power comes from. So what does incantation do, as I asked? In the Bible, it creates, it manifests the universe, the world. It, it sets creation into motion. It is a word which, once spoken, resounds perpetually off into infinite space and causes a chain of events which perpetually complexify themselves as creation and evolution does, tends to do, tends, think about the word tendency and the element of things tending to do things and what is that power of tendency, what fuels it, what fuels tendency, mm, is that evolution, is that an evolutionary elemental power, is it a deva, is it a person, is it non-self, is it a Dhamma? Is it visible? Is it an immaterial Dhamma? Yes, it is. It has no form. So, incantation is not a word spoken from a language that has grammar and is in a book. That is written language. That is Nama. Nama Dhamma name in its manifest form written. So that is name and form together. That is form representing name. But uh, those forms representing names, which we call words or written characters, and the abstract concepts which arise thereof or from them, that is rupa nama. Rupa, Nama, form and name, two things. And these are the real two things I want to talk about. Not the two things behind them. Which is incantation and will. Will. What is will? Incantation, firstly, is really meaning something, that is saying something. You don't need your mouth and you don't need the written word. Your mouth and sound, that is also rupanama because molecules vibrate, uh, particles vibrate in the material universe and travel through space-time <coughs> Excuse me, and affect everything else. <coughs> But real incantation is immaterial and lies in the realm of the heart more than the mind. The mind thinks and decides, but the heart is that which wills. And so when somebody really means something, if you really, really mean something, I think only when you have really meant something for the first time you can know the full true meaning of this. When you really, really mean something 100%, then it becomes, or if it is a lesser meaning of meanings, 
it all the way then uh, comes close to being true incantation because will lies behind it and this is where the power to cause real effects come from and this is where a real adept or a real magician or a real practitioner can actually prove to himself and sometimes others that if, if you want to say magic, magic is real or that incantation and will have the power to manifest things or that transformation is possible, that alchemy is possible that one can cause effects through willing something and that katha, physical use of the mouth for incantation uh, with really meaning putting behind one's words or what one is asking for, be it with words or be it an incantation as a silent prayer. There are also incantations a true adept can summon without opening his mouth. He can focus his mind. It is the same as Buddhist meditation. And this is why the Buddhist legends tell always of monks even in the Buddha's time that could perform what humans call magical feats or supernatural feats of seemingly impossible acts or, or feats of power because they discovered through their meditation and their concentration these things and the elemental nature of things and understood those elemental natures and immaterial dhammas, immaterial phenomena and laws to the point where they could skive around them or manipulate them to a certain point. And for those who do not understand this, this can appear mysterious, magical or even miraculous. Whereas, in fact, it is just science, it is uh, sat, sastra, sayazat in Thai means occult. Occult in English comes from, uh, it comes from Greek, means hidden. But actually, so sayazat, what do you think of a sorcery or magic, miraculous things? Sayazat, sad is a worldly science. Uh, Putasad. Uh, the path to Nirvana, Buddha science, that is truly miraculous for a different reason. Whereas sorcery is actually still of the world because it uses cosmic laws which exist there just beyond the knowledge of average or normal or non-practiced humans who have not investigated these dhammas or these immaterial phenomena which are not measurable with scientific instruments. Scientific instruments uh, use the material universe on an atomic, subatomic or even macroscopic level astronomical distances right down to the smallest particles are studied. To find immaterial things they discover but some immaterial things which must be measured in order to discover other things, those they do not measure, for they have not yet discovered them. But the Buddhist meditators and also beings of many places who have practice self-knowledge through different methods, all of them we could call the Dhamma, be it Buddhism or others which might exist on other planets or other worlds or in other societies. So, telepathy and symbolism. Telepathy and symbolism. Uh, incantation is part of 
magic words and nama rupa form and name are two powers which limit our perception which is ruled by duality this duality is I'm going to talk about it in a third talk which will follow this one and will be called duality and uh, the next thing is will so really meaning something those who have practiced jhana absorption or samatha focus meditation or kasin kasina staring meditations will know from their own experience if they have tried that focus and will are synonymous they are actually one and the same or they are one and the same they are split into different facets parts of ourself when categorized in C or Indriya Indriya in Sanskrit in Pali in C in time means kind of like effort so effort to concentrate if one achieves that effort to concentrate to the point where one achieves jhana and then the immaterial absorption after the focus of jhana and the rapture which arrives from the focus of the first three jhanas comes the fourth and fifth jhana which are actually one where that focus lets go of even the last thing it was clinging to in order to let go of all other things focused on one thing to let go of all other things and to receive rapture from that and then to realize that this rapture and this one thing which one is focused on that is causing the rapture because nothing else is obstructing or distracting can also be let go of and when this is realized and let go of one enters the immaterial mind realms of arupa jhana then there is no more pleasure or no consciousness of a person being happy and enjoying that pleasure there is actually an even more pleasurable sensation but there is no sense of a person there enjoying that pleasure there is only complete absolute elsewhere absolute elsewhere nothing more can be said when one comes back when one finds oneself thinking hey I just did a Rupa Jhana I'm in a Rupa Jhana this is beautiful one is no longer there when one is thinking this one has already returned for one is thinking Vitaka and Vichara is Vitok Vichan in Thai uh, to stress and worry actually means analyze and conclude and judge and make a summary when this process happens you are already no longer in the formless immaterial mental realm of arupa jhana and you are falling from jhana rupa jhana formless jhana back into the normal state which is a monologue with oneself using nama names for rupa forms and sometimes in the case of the written word we use form to represent name this is where we are lost in rupa nama we are lost in illusion with these two things with word and will or with incantation and concentration and effort focused into one point then the incantation becomes powerful because will lies behind it this is really meaning what is one is saying in worldly words this must be contemplated and profundizado you say in Spanish how do you say that in English profundizado profound means deep profundizar means to deepen you have to deepen your understanding of this and contemplate this and practice meditation practice try to 
practice to enter the jhanas, the first jhana, the second jhana, to get the raptures, to get the third jhana, and then to contemplate until the day when one can recognize how to let go of the things which gave you jhana without losing jhana and to fall into arupa jhana. The Buddha laid this out as an essential and unavoidable, uncircumnavigable object to, a, to master along the path to Nibbana, to the far shore, to heaven if you like, to liberation from eternal rebirth in samsara with rupa and nama controlling our minds, to not be universally awakened spiritual beings, pure, without stain, without the causes of birth and death, immortal, immortal. So, I shall leave you now with this to await my third talk which will be on duality after talking about rupa and nama which are two things two sides of duality which are root causes then we shall continue to try and understand the dhamma and reflect in the third talk I will see you in the talk about duality so for now this is Ajahn Spencer signing off and wishing you health, lots of wealth lots of happiness no suffering and a very long and happy life may we all find universal truth that is truly universal and not dependent on conditioned cultural, political or racial views. And may we attain that through the true path, which is the only path, that of the self-realized, which in Pali and in Buddhism is known as Bajatang. The Dhamma can be observed whilst looking without, outside of one's body. But the Dhamma can never be seen or intuited.